Today we're going to do a little bit of preventative maintenance on the cutting deck. Um, I've got to replace the belt. Last year, I think when I started it up for the first time, there was an issue with the routing on the belt, if I'm not mistaken. Something happened anyways, and you could see it started to chew it up. I ran it like that all season, and I didn't have an issue, but I have an extra belt, so I figure I might as well put the fresh belt on if I'm going through the thing and uh, get everything up to snuff. And once that's done, then we can take this out for a spin. I did put new blades on it last season, uh, so I'm probably just going to touch those up with the grinder and take off any burrs that might be uh, on the cutting edge, on the leading edge. They seem okay at the moment, uh, but we'll check it out. And I'll scrape some of this leftover debris out from last season. I hit, I hit it with the power washer usually pretty good. And I uh, got most of it out, but there's still some there. And we're going to grease these bearings. I have a sneaking suspicion that something fishy is going on. Um, but let's, let's dive into it a little bit first. So this is what I've discovered so far. This is an old bearing. I think this would have been pretty well original to the mower. Um, I don't know how many times it was serviced before I got it. I don't know the history, but I can tell you that I changed the spindles on the cutting deck shortly after ownership. So this one's been sitting in the barn for a bunch of years. And I just had a hunch after checking out the drive line on this and the way those bearings were set up. I was curious. So this is a GX 2015 2, 20154. 2015, I'm sorry, 20152. And it looks like the part number on the spindles that are currently on the cutting deck would be a GY20785. Different part number. The only thing I can tell physically so far is this was a non-greasable unit. So there's no grease nipple inside the cavity. Uh, where these ones do have a grease nipple, it's dirty, but there's, there's a grease nipple on each of these uh, bearing spindles. Spindles, whatever. So just for fun, I knocked this thing apart. Uh, it didn't take a lot of effort. You take the, uh, basically once you take the pulley off the top end and the nut, you can just hammer the shaft through and everything pops apart. It's all sleeved. There's a spacer in there and there's two bearings. One bearing ends up at the bottom and one bearing ends up at the top. And understandably, these were sealed bearings. Uh, they have a little O-ring in them that's supposed to probably keep the lubricant inside, but the reason this bearing failed it got moisture in it and corroded. So this is after having been sprayed with some uh, some rust inhibitor to try to help me get this apart without totally destroying it. This bearing's a little bit nicer. Uh, but that kind of gives you a visual of what's going on. And I'm kind of curious, because I think I've done these spindles two or three times at this rate. And 45 bucks a piece is about what I can get them for. So I'm curious if those bearings inside those spindles have the race covers installed or if they're exposed on one side because if they're exposed on one side at least the grease gets into them because the grease nipple kind of is positioned in the center area so the grease would grow up you know as you pump it in there it would exp it would it would work its way up and down to these bearings to hopefully lube them up i'm kind of curious if the races are still intact like this how is that grease supposed to get into those bearings we're going to dig in a little bit and, and find out we're going to start with this first spindle. Um, now, if you're trying to take this off and all you have is a ratchet, what I would advise is from underneath, you use a block of wood to jam the blade. And that's going to keep this thing from wanting to rotate and then allow you to take that nut off and remove the pulley. Alternately, if you have an impact gun, you should be able to get the same thing done, but minus the blocking. So. I am going to put a bit of tension on this with the belt and my hand just to keep it from wanting to rotate. And that's it. And the bearing pull or the pulley comes off. Uh, I think these are directional so you can see the way the divot is. The divot goes down. So we'll make sure we keep note of that. So there is grease coming out the top of this. I've loaded these spindles with grease 
uh, quite a bit during the season because I try to keep these things lubed up so they're going to work. Uh, but what I'm really curious to see is what the inner workings are like. So I'm putting the nut back on the end because I don't want to mushroom the threads. And I'm just going to give it a smack here. So, now the whole assembly should pop right out. There's our top spacer. Cool. Here is our actual spindle, and it's just basically a nut inside the, the end there, which you can see right here, this is what it would look like. And then the blade bolts onto the top of that to keep it all in check. So fine. And what I'm really curious about is these bearings. Now I can see they're both still inside the spindle, so I'm gonna have to try to work those out of there. So looking inside the spindle, if, if you can't see it, I'll kind of break it down. There's a bearing on top, there's a steel sleeve, and then there's a bearing on the bottom. I can see a little bit of a space there. So these bearings are pressed in from the top and bottom and not meant to come apart from, from my understanding. Uh, but I'm kind of thinking we should be able to drive these out a little bit and get some access and find out if they have a seal on both sides or not. So the good news here is this spacer is just kind of floating inside and that gives me good access to the ball bearings. And you know what? Looking in there, I can see the ball bearings are exposed. It's probably really difficult for you guys to tell, but I'm inside the raceway of that bearing, so... That means there is no cover on that bearing. So my hunch was for nothing. Yep. There's... Let's see here. It feels like there is a race on the top, but not on the... Or there's, a, there's an oil seal on the top, but not on the bottom bearing. I'm going to knock it out and we're going to see. I'm going to... Uh, Actually, I'll use the other spindle to push these bearings out and I'll tap with my hammer. We're going to find out what's going on in there. Okay, I've got, an, uh, I've got an extension in there from the bottom side. So I'm going to tap around the edge of the bearing here. Would you look at that? Why would the top bearing have an oil seal on both sides then? I'm not understanding the engineering here. But the bottom does not. Yeah, the bottom I'm right into that there is no seal on the bottom, so it's it's just open. Very interesting. So just like in my other video when I opened up the oil seal on those ball bearings in order to grease them properly, I'm going to do the same here, except I'm not going to reinstall the seal. So I'm going to leave this totally open and exposed internally, so the ball bearings are going to face downward. Uh, that at least is going to allow the grease up into that ball bearing and hopefully extend the life of this uh, significantly over what it would have been originally. Okay, I'm gonna get a socket, let's see here. I can use this nut. This, the diameter of this nut is large enough that it's pressing on the outer race of the bearing. So I should be safe to use the hammer and gently drive that back in. Alright, 
Now the reassembly process. So we're going to start by putting the spindle from the bottom side through. There it is. Now we've got our top spacer, which looks like to be a pressure style fit, which is fine. What I'm going to do first is run the nut down a little bit to press this on and then I'll reinstall the pulley. All right, so that's easy enough. We can see the spline for the pulley is, is exposed again. We've got the big bubble side down. There we go. Excellent. Now I think we give it a healthy drink of grease through the grease nipple, and once it oozes out, we are full. All right, I'm just up to the third ball bearing, so each spindle had an oil seal only on the top portion of the spindle on the inside. The bottoms were open, but you can see inside, like this, I, I, I should have shown you before I wiped it off. The outside of this was caked with grease. There was tons of grease on it. But the inside, there's not much in there at all. And I've been using a purple, there's a purple grease in there that I was using, maybe it's blue. Um, but this is a gray, this is a totally different color grease. So my assumption is that my new grease never got into this ball bearing the entire time it's been in service on this machine. I'm really leaning toward the fact that these are designed to fail just so the consumer has to go out and buy another $45 spindle times three. You're looking at like 140 bucks to do this cutting deck if you're doing it yourself. Forget bringing it to the dealer. At least this is with this specific model. I can't speak to all of them, but certainly something interesting can be, uh, can be learned from this experience. So I'm gonna reassemble the last spindle, get it all together, put a new belt on, grease it up, and I think we're gonna be ready to rip. So this is where we're gonna end this video. I've got my brand new belt on and I ran some grease into the spindles and you can actually see it oozing out of the top, which it never did before, uh, probably on account of those oil seals. I only ever saw the grease come out the bottom of the spindle where the blade is uh, between this part of the blade mount and the body of the actual spindle. It's kind of an interesting find, those oil seals placed like they were. I don't know if there's a strategic reason for that. I, I can't offhand, I can't really think of anything, but um, the fact that there was still the gray colored grease inside those bearings that I removed and popped the seals out of, um, and the grease I'm using is purple, at least until right now, because I just refilled with a blue tube. Um, there was no purple grease inside of these spindles, and that's two seasons they've been on this cutting deck, I do believe. And I'm, I'm very thorough and regular with the greasing. That's why I've got the guards off, so I can actually get to the grease nipples with this thing under the tractor uh, without having to take it off. It's a bit of a stretch to get the center, but I can reach the ends in the center with it all the way down when it's installed on the tractor. And that's every two or three times that I cut the lawn, I always grease it because I've got about two and a half hours of cutting on a normal on a normal run. So it, uh, it takes its toll on this thing and burns them up pretty quick. I'm curious to see how it's going to work for this season now, if it's going to be a little bit quieter. It certainly seemed noisy toward the end of last year. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you can get some useful information from this. Maybe throw away an oil seal or two and uh, save yourself a couple of bucks. Anyways... Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Have a good day, evening, weekend, whatever the heck it might be. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next round. All right. Cheers.
So the second half of this video is recorded basically a year later. Um, I wanted to do it this way just because I did want to show that there is a result with this. So this is the same cutting deck and the same spindles that I removed the extra um, bearing cap on the inside of the spindle. So for the cutting deck on this mower, let's see here. And this is after an entire season of use. They're still quiet. They don't have any slop in them or play. Now when I grease them, I give them a few extra pumps. I see a little bit come out on the top side underneath this pulley. And then of course some comes out underneath on the uh, blade side. So I've got that whole cavity now filled with grease, unlike before where the grease was not really doing anything. It was really a silly design. I was curious why it might be made like that. I never did get a straight answer, um, but I'm thinking that this is a viable option for those of you that want to extend the life of these spindles. And it doesn't take a lot of effort to take them apart. As long as you've got an impact gun, it makes it a lot easier. It can be done without, um, but it certainly helps if you have access to one. And I think because this is the low-grade machine, like the L-Series from Lowe's or Home Depot, that it's uh, certainly watered-down product. This doesn't speak to any of the other machines out there that uh, might be a higher quality or commercial-grade uh, mowers. This is more of a, a toy in that aspect. Uh, but I just figured I'd share what I found here and my results. Um, I'm really happy with this, and it's still going strong. I think I'm now at 100 and... I'm sorry, at 500 and... 47 hours on the clock there, but I also snow blow and I tow with this so it's not always just cutting But I but anyways, I wanted to just thank you guys for checking this video out and I hope you like it um, Hope you get something out of it and uh, maybe we'll see you around on the next one right on cheers